Well, praise the Lord. What an honor it is to be back tonight. And I told some of them it seemed like we just left. So maybe we should have just stayed and eat supper together or dinner together and just come on back in. But we thank God for that. And, and praise God. And I know not every church is uh, able to come uh, twice on Sunday, but I count it a privilege and an honor to be able to worship the Lord. You know, I, I tried to, to share with you just a little bit about uh, the 10% if we look into that. And praise God, it'd be hard for you to get that 17 hours without giving the Lord about all a Sunday. And, and I'm thankful that we're able to do that. The health he's given us to be able to be here. And, and praise God, we're just so thankful for what he's done for us and those that have come out tonight. And, and praise God, you just get into the service. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. We're going to go to uh, the book of Romans chapter 6 tonight and <clears throat> something that I really, uh, maybe there Friday, I was uh, frost seeding some clover there in the field at the house, and I began to meditate on the Lord, and it seemed like he kept putting his thought back in my mind. I thought, well, uh, Lord, I don't know if I could preach that or not, but if you, you give it back to me, maybe later on I will. So it seemed like today he, he brought that thought back to me. When I left, I had no idea what was coming back with tonight, just to share with you how this works on this side of, of the pulpit. I'd had no idea what was going to uh, preach or anything, but it seemed like he <clears throat> began to reveal this thought back to me, and and I'm so thankful that the Lord is real tonight. He, he, you know, he's not a God that's a far off, that he can't be touched, praise God, but he's right there with us all along. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that, that he, I'm, I'm glad I'm on his team. I, I'm glad, praise God, that I, I try to serve the Lord and I try to serve, I've served, or, or praise God, or, I guess served him or been under a lot of people that I really didn't like being under. I'll just be honest with you. I didn't like what I was a, a part of and didn't care a lot about it, but thank God I'm proud of my master today. I'm proud of my savior. I don't want to be ashamed of him. He said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed for my father, which is in heaven. I don't want him to be ashamed of me. Do you, Brother Wayne? I, I surely don't. I know there's been times that, and I told you before, he's had to say, yeah, that's mine. I, you know, we, we've said that before. Maybe we was teaching one Wednesday night, some young and get into something at the grocery store and tear something down. And the, the, the owner of the grocery store wants to find out who it is. And some parents got to say, it's mine. The Lord's had to do that a whole lot with me. He's had to say, yeah, that one belongs to me. Let's take him back to the house and try to correct him. But thank God he, he's had patience with me and, and he, he's loved on me. Praise God. And, and when I needed a scolding, he scolded me. And when I needed my legs striped, he striped my legs. Praise God. And, and when I just needed a hug, he hugged me. So tonight, I don't know what he wants to do for you, but if you want to stand for the reading tonight, we're going to read in uh, Romans chapter 6, starting with verse 15, and, and I'll read the full chapter to verse 23. And <clears throat> you can be much in prayer for us tonight. I still don't know how to preach. You already know that. And I'm just going to obey the Lord and offer what he has for us tonight. Praise God to you all. So, and the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 15, What then shall we sin because we are under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Let's go back to verse 15 just a minute. I want to, I read this today and he's saying, so you're saying if, if you're under the law, you, you're under grace, you can just keep on sinning? He's saying, God forbid. No, you can't do that just because you're not under the law anymore. And, and some people say, and I'm going to get into the message in a minute, but some people say, well, I'm under the grace dispensation. I can just do whatever and it'll be all right. I don't find that anywhere in my Bible, friend. And, and what I just read to you, he's saying, God forbid. That you think because you're under grace, you can just go and do what you want to. There's nothing this Bible says, once I get saved, I'm just free to do anything I want to. Now, I don't read it like that, friend. Just want to touch on that a minute. <clears throat> Verse 17 says, But God, be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed. Thank God. I used to be the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin. Don't that feel good? Ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. He said, I know you're a man. I know you're going to make mistakes. I know we're weak in the flesh. He said, I know that. That's what I'm telling you here. Praise God. He said, because you're firm to the flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanliness and to the iniquity and to iniquity. Even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. You've got a different master tonight. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end, I'm ashamed of my past, friend. And I hope if you're saved by the grace of God, I hope if you're lost tonight, you're ashamed of where you're at today. You just ain't got to the altar yet. Praise God, that's where I'm at. I'm ashamed of my past. I'm ashamed of those things. But God, forgive me of that and he'll forgive you too. He said, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. 
But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. This is what I like right here. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray one more time. And you pray that God be able to use me. Uh, Father in heaven, I bow before you like I do so many times. And, and God, I know that I don't have much to give them tonight. Just a, uh, Maybe just a thimble full, Father. But I pray, God, if I just say two or three words, that it would edify the body, that it would edify uh, the one that died on the cross. And, and Father, I pray that you touch each and every heart that's here tonight. I don't know their heart, God. I don't know who's lost. I don't know who's saved. But I pray, Lord, uh, that as we get done tonight, that there be nobody left that's not saved. Nobody under my voice. God would, would turn away from you once again, but Lord, they'd realize that the, the way that they're on, it's not the right way, and praise God, the end of that is death, friend, but I pray, God, you'd be able to touch, Lord, and just for a few moments, God, send down that anointing, I know that I can't do anything without you, I'm completely dependent upon you tonight, God, I'm just a weak vessel, Father, I pray you take this stammering tongue, God, this weak vessel, this broken body, and use it for thy glory. Oh, Lord, use it for thy glory and the upbuilding of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. Uh, the thought that maybe come to my heart, and, and while I was out in the field just working, I like it when, when God speaks to you when you're not really expecting it. And, and you know, sometimes we, we pray and we seek God's face and it seems like we don't hear what we want to hear. But praise God, right when we just don't even think about it, that's when he begins to speak to us. Don't you like it like that? That's what makes him a real God tonight. He just don't come down on command, uh, but he comes exactly when you need it. And I begin to think just a little bit, a, a thought that God put on my heart, praise God. And I begin to think about the side effects of sin. The side effects of sin in a man's life. And we've all been familiar with that. And kind of funny that uh, Sister Bridget's here tonight. But I thought about it a little bit with the, the pharmacy. And no doubt we've all taken some type of medicine, I'm sure, uh, that we have. And, and maybe maybe some's taken more. Some has taken less. But they always give you, uh, praise God, that paper tells you what the side effects you need to look out for. They always give you that paper that says that this might happen or this might happen. But you know what? I see the things that this world and uh, this world don't tell you of uh, the side effects of sin. They don't tell you that sin will send you to a devil's hell. They say drink one more. They say go ahead and do that a little longer. They say go ahead and do this a little longer, friend. I'm telling you the wages of sin is death and the side effects of that will destroy your home. The side effects of sin, friend, will take you further than you want to go. He said the wages of sin is death. You know there's going to be a great payday one day. I used to look forward to my paydays, and I still do, but there was a time when, praise God, I'd look at, at the calendar and I'd say, man, if I can make it two more days, if I can make it three more days, I can just get that paycheck. But you know what? It's the opposite of that, those in sin. They're looking and think that payday's never going to come. They think they can do anything they want to, and there's no consequences. But I tell you tonight, friend, praise God, there's going to be consequences for your action. If they sin in your heart tonight, if they sin in your life tonight, you will pay for that. I will pay for that, friend. There's no way I'm going to get out of this world without paying for my sin. But you know what? I ain't got to pay for it. That's one that bled and died on that cross and said, I could go free. He said, I can't pay it. You can't pay it. But there's one that's going to pay your sin debt. Praise the Lord. There's one that's going to pay your sin debt because they side effects of your sin. You've seen the side effects. We've seen it before, and I've seen it not to bring humor to anything like that at all, but you've seen the mug shots of those, and it looked like they're 100 years old, and maybe find out they're only 30 years old, friend. The side effects of that sin comes down into their body and destroys them, and that's what the devil wants to do. That's exactly what the devil wants to do. But God wants to help you. I believe, baby, in the, praise God, in the Bible I read here today, it said that not to forget when God brought all those children of Israel out of Egypt, he later destroyed them because their unbelief. Praise God, there was consequences for their sin. When Moses went up on the mountain and came back down and seen that all of them was worshiping, praise God, the golden calf, there was consequences for that. There was consequences for their action. There was side effects to their sin. They was worse than that golden calf. And he came down and was so angry. And he praised God. He said, who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? And you know what? On that day, many of them died. Maybe thousands of them died. There was consequences for their sin. There's people tonight that decided to stay home and they said it ain't going to matter. 
It ain't going to matter. I can go down to that church. It ain't going to help me none. You know what? It helps me to go to church. It may not help nobody else, but it sure helps your preacher to go to church. It sure helps your pastor to go to church and to feel the Spirit of God. I know, praise God, what sinners do when the door is closed. I know what they do. I'm ashamed of what they do, but there's consequences for that action. There's consequences for your sin, friend. The side effects of that medicine, and maybe we had a nephew a couple weeks ago, and, and he took some medicine, and I hadn't thought about this till today, but he took some medicine, and uh, I believe it made him pretty sick. They had to take him to the hospital. They didn't know he was allergic to that. You know, the world say, just take one drink. Just, just take one pill. It'll be, just, it'll be all right. Just take one for your head. Just take one for your back. Just take one for your stomach. For you know it, friend, they got you full of dope, and you can't feel the Spirit of God no more. Amen. <laughs> There's consequences for your actions. There's consequences for your sin. Now, I'm not saying you're not supposed to take medicine. I, I'd be a fool to stand up here and tell you that. But I'm telling you there's consequences when you allow just a little bit of sin. What's the Bible tell me? A little bit of leaven. Leaven the whole lump. Just a little bit of that leaven. Leaven the whole lump. Just a little bit. You know what? It takes a whole lot to get clean. It takes a whole lot to get clean, but it takes one spot to be dirty. Praise the Lord. It takes one spot to be dirty. Hey, this shirt was washed maybe yesterday or the day before that. It was clean when I put it on. But by the time I get home, it'll surely be dirty. It only takes one spot for me to be dirty. It only takes one spot <laughs> for me to be dirty for the Lord. It only takes one little piece of sin for me to be dirty and the Lord to say, depart from me. I never knew you, ye worker of iniquity. How many is thinking tonight? They're gambling that there's no consequence for their sin. There's no side effects to their sin. Now, some side effects, it's like with my little nephew there. I, he started screaming, started hollering, started having problems, and they knew something was going on. Next thing you know, he started breaking out, started showing up. You know, sometimes your side effects from sin, everybody else can see it. It was easy for me to see that. I wasn't even around him, but I've seen a video, and I knew exactly what was wrong with him. Hey, sometimes the side effects of your sin, everybody else knows what's wrong with you. Praise God, they ain't going to tell you that. It's easy to see there's a problem with you. It's easy to see when it's a problem with me. And God can take that. Praise the Lord. He can take that and make a new creature out of you. You got a side effect of something you're doing, friend? A side effect of your sin? This world says it'll be all right. Sometimes, you know, it, it, if somebody gets stung by a bee, there's a side effect. They begin to swell and they can't breathe. You know, it's the same way, spiritually speaking. If you get stung, praise God, by sin, and you allow it to stay there too long, and you don't try to medicate that, or you don't try to doctor that, you know what's going to happen? It's going to cut off your oxygen, friend. It's going to cut off your breathing, and you know what the end of that is? The wages of death, friend. You're going to end up in a devil's hell. I'd hate to end up there with you. I'd hate to end up in that place because of consequences for my sin. There's consequences for your action. You know that great paydays are coming one day. Oh my. That great paydays are coming one day and they some going to get paid something they don't realize they're going to get paid. You ever got a check and it was a whole lot less than what you thought it was? A whole lot less than what you thought it was supposed to be. How come ever doing that farming lot? I thought it was going to be a great big check. It'd be a small one. They, that's going to happen to a lot of people. They said, well, I went to church, Lord. I put my money in the pot, Lord. He said, yeah, depart from me. I never knew you. You never repented of your sin. And praise God, you still got it in you. <laughs> praise the Lord. There's consequences for your sin. Can I get an amen right there? Do you got consequences for your sin? You allow things to come in your home. You allow things to come in your heart. There'll be consequences for that. And the side effects may kill you. I know that my mother, bless her heart, every time she'd get one of them uh, side effects things, she'd read every one of them. And before she even took the pill, she'd already start saying, yeah, I can feel this coming on. I can feel, I said, mommy, you ain't took the pill yet. How can you feel the side effect of that? You know what sin, praise God, will take you further than you want to go. And they said it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. Things that you know is wrong. Things that I know is wrong. You say, let me look one more time. I'm going to get right where we're at. Man, let me look one more time. Woman, let me look one more time. Man, let me talk one more time. Woman, let me talk. Let me flirt one more time. I don't know why it's been on my heart. I don't know. I have no idea. Let's, let me talk to that woman one more time. Let me smile at her one more time. Let, let me see if she'll smile back. I'm telling you, that'll send a man to a devil's hell quicker than anything. God, would you help us tonight? Would you help every one of us not to have that wandering eye? Woman, you do the same thing as a man does. It ain't just a man. We all fall short of the glory. The Bible said all we as sheep have gone astray. You know why? Because we're drawn away. We're drawn away, the Bible says, of our own lust, Brother Wayne. You say, I don't willfully sin, and I thought about that yesterday. God knows that, that occasionally there's times that there's sin I have to ask Him to forgive me for. But as far as willfully sinning, I hope there ain't nobody in here that's willfully sinning. I hope you're not. If you are, God needs to really help you. There's times we make mistakes. 
There's times we do things we shouldn't do, but to set my mind on premeditated sin, that's dangerous, friend. That's dangerous tonight to be premeditated on what we're going to do wrong. I don't believe a Christian should be like that. I know we all fall short. There's things, praise God, we find ourselves doing that we're ashamed of and, and maybe we said something we shouldn't have said. But if it's premeditated, that's a wholly different, whole different story. That's a whole different story if you think about it before you leave the house. What you're going to do when you get out there on the road. That's a whole different story if you think about it at the house. What you're going to do when you get to work, friend. A whole different story. And God don't have to forgive that. He said when you're drawn away of your own lust. You're drawn away of your own lust. Just like those in Israel. He brought them out and then destroyed them. Friend. I'd hate to see him bring somebody out. He said, you are justified by the law. You're no more under grace. <laughs> he said, you, 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 you're falling away from grace. I'd hate to fall away from the grace door, from the grace that God wants to lay out for me because I've turned to sin. I've seen too many people. I've seen too many people come to the house of God and you go to work with them. You ain't got no idea they can go to church. They don't act like church people. I believe church people ought to be different, don't you? I believe church people, praise God, I'm not talking about better nobody. That's what the world needs to see, that you're a church person, that you go to church, you're blood bowled, praise God, and you ain't different than nobody else. You ain't better than nobody else, but you believe upon the Lord. And you believe upon His Son. You think we can make heaven our home without Him? No, no, no. His grace is sufficient for us, friend. But there's side effects to the sin that we allow into our home. Before you allow something in your home, I don't know why we're here, but we're going to roll with it. Before you allow something in your home, you need to look at it and see, does this need to be in my home? And I'm not going to point out what it is because I don't have that authority, friend. I'm just telling you what it's going to take to make heaven. If you look at something, you need to decide, is this okay to bring into my house? If you don't know, you need to ask God, God, is this thing, whatever this is, is it okay to bring into my house? Is this going to be something that destroys us? Is this going to be something that draws me away from you? Is this going to be something that keeps me awake at night and I don't want to read my Bible no more? Is this going to be my end? What is it that's going to be your end, friend? Those that are in hell tonight, there's something that was their end. There was something that they chose over the walk of the Lord. There's something in their life that they chose to do more, praise God, than following after the Lord. What is it in your home? Is there anything in my home that's going to destroy me? Is there anything that God could help me to take out of my house that could be my end? You know, there's side effects to that. You bring something in your house, and I know we don't really think about it a lot, and maybe I don't think about it like I need to. And when I go to the store and I pick up something, and I'm going to bring that into the house. I need to look at that and say, is this going to be something? Is this going to harm my wife? Is this going to harm my body? Is this going to harm my children? Is this going to harm my grandchildren? Is this something? Because they side effects are everything we spend time with. They side effects are too much sun. They side effects are being in the dark too much, not having enough sunlight. They side effects are everything. But the side effects of sin, friend, is death. He said the wages of sin. I'd hate to receive those wages, wouldn't you? I'd hate to receive the wages of a sinner man. I'd hate to receive. I'd like to receive the gift, wouldn't you? I'd rather have the gift than the wages tonight. There's many today. Many today, they chose not to come to church. They said it wasn't worth it. Not worth it. They weighed it out in the balance in their life. And they said it really wasn't worth it, Brother Donnie. They looked at it and they thought there's no profit. No profit to come to church. But there will come a day, friend. There will come a day where they wish that they'd have called upon the name of the Lord. It'll be too late in that day. It'll be too late in that day. They're going to pay the consequences. On that great payday, all those have been living it up, all those have been running to and fro, praise God, the way that such as some of us used to do, running to and fro in the world, trying to fulfill the desires and the lusts of the world, the end of that is death. I've thought about this before. This false advertisement, and, and I wish they'd put the side effects on everything. When I was a young man, and I don't know if they still do it, I don't even think they do it no more. But when I was a young man, and some of you my age remember this, I hope you didn't listen to it, but they were certain types of music. Uh, they put, praise God, warnings on the front of it so the parents knew that they didn't need to be letting their children listen to that. Now, of course, that's what I wanted to listen to, just being in sin. But, but at that time, they put a warning label on it. I don't even know if they do that now. But they cared enough back then to tell their parents, you may not want to let them listen to this. This is going to be the end of them. This will end up destroying them if they take it too far. Do they still put warning labels on stuff like that? No. It's false advertisement, friend. I've thought about it before, and, and I'm going to get on this in a minute, I guess, because it burns me up more than anything. They all have a, a commercial or a, an advertisement or a, a billboard, and they'll show somebody there. I'm getting right down where we're living at. They'll show somebody right there with just opening up that beer, and everybody's so happy. Everybody just cutting up and carrying on. Let's see what they look like after about 10 or 12 of them. Let's see what goes on after that, friend. I don't want to see what happens when they first open it up and think everything's all right. I want to see what happens to their family. I want to see what happens to their children. I want them to show exactly what happens when you get pulled into that mess. They don't show that, do they? They ain't going to show you the end of it. I want to see the side effects of what it happens to a man when he starts drinking. I want to see the side effects of what happens when a man starts drinking, or smoking dope. I want to see the side effects on the side of that. 
I want a, I want a written form. They ought to do that. You know why? They want to sell it. They don't care about nobody dying, going to devil's hell. All they're worried about is making that money. For the love of the money is rid of all evil, friend. I'd love to see the side effects. But you know what? It ain't got to be on the side of it. But if you pray and ask God, he'll show you what the side effects are. He'll show you what the side effects are. They side effects drink too much pop. Praise God. They side effects eat too much sugar. They side effects eat too much meat. They side effects not eat enough meat. They side effects to everything, friend. But there's one thing that I'd hate to receive the side effects of. And that's having sin in my heart when I lay my, when I lay my head down. Praise God and die. Praise God. I'd hate to lay my head down and know there's side effects in my body from the sin I've chose. That I've chose to, 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 re, to receive those things. Sister Judy, you come. I ain't going to be much longer. This ain't going over very well. Praise God, I'm telling you, there's side effects in our life that will send us to a devil's hell, and nobody wants to hear about that. They want to think you can just do anything you want to, and that's a reproach to the Lord tonight to think we can just do anything we want. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Just anything you want to do, just be fine. God is a God of mercy. He said, if you're not under grace no more, don't you be going around thinking you can sin just because you're under the grace dispensation. The Bible don't say nothing about that, but there's many people tonight being led astray. Being led astray by a double tongue in a pulpit, tell them they can do anything they want to do. I'd hate to find out that. I heard a story one time, maybe a story, maybe true, I don't know. But it said there's a woman on her deathbed, and, and they called for the preacher to come. And, and she said, I'm sure you've heard this before, but she said, I want you to read to me out of that Bible. So he picked it up, and he, he, it was her Bible once she carried to church. And he began to read, and he said, why is there so much stuff cut out of here? He, she said, well, when I was at church, you told us that didn't matter. And he said, well, like this. She said, well, you told us that didn't matter. I'm telling you, the whole book matters, friend. The whole book matters. We can't cut none of it out of it. The wages of sin is death. And that's where we end up. You say, I don't like this. Praise God, I didn't like it either when I wasn't right. But when I got right, I loved it. I wanted to live for him, friend. I wanted to die for him. I wanted to do everything he wanted me to do. You know why? Because I want to know that everybody is going to heaven. Hey, oh Lord, makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. It's good enough for my mama. It's good enough for my daddy if he'll receive it. Praise God. It's good enough for everybody. It's good for dying. It's good for living tonight. Because what do you have? I've asked you many times. I want to ask you again. Is what you have tonight, is it worth dying for? Is it worth dying for, brother? Is it worth dying for? Is your salvation worth dying for? I believe it's worth dying for. If they cut your head off here in a few years, it'll be worth dying for. I believe Paul ran to the chop block. He said, yeah, <laughs> it may be better for you for me to stay. But he said, I'm ready to go as we all stand tonight. As we all stand tonight. The side effects of sin. Before you bring anything into your home, before you digest anything, for you listen to anybody, you don't know their life. Ask God to show you what's the side effect. What's the results? What's the results of taking information from somebody that, praise God, uh, you don't need to take information from? Ain't that what happens to our children when they get out? And I ain't throwing no rocks to nobody. I did the same thing. When they get out, start hanging around the wrong people, Brother Wayne. Ain't that what happens? They'll listen to a lie five times before they'll listen to the truth. They'll listen to a lie. Oh, yeah, the lie sounds good to the ear, don't it? It tickles the ears. How many of us as young people, don't raise your hand. You knew better. I like to preach a message like that one time. You knew better. There's many of us, we knew better. But we got pulled into that. The side effects of it, how many of them died that way, friend? Wouldn't listen to mom and daddy. Wouldn't listen to nothing mom and daddy said. Didn't want nothing to do with it. Didn't want nothing to do with that, that old holy way. Didn't want nothing to do with Jesus. That ain't cool. Praise God. I don't care if it's cool or not. I know one thing, heaven's going to be cool. Praise the Lord. Heaven's going to be cool. Hey, maybe not the way this world sees it, but I believe in the cool of the day, just like in that garden. When, praise the Lord. When God came down and talked to Adam, I believe it would be the same way in heaven. It'll be cool there. Every head about every eye closed. Is there something in your life, friend, <laughs> that the side effects is taking you away you don't want to go? When I was sick last year, they some medicine they give me. And I, I believed, I told the doctor, I said, the side effects is worse than what I'm dealing with. I can't take this no more. The side effects is worse. I'd rather deal with the pain. I'd rather deal with what's going on. I don't want to deal with it, but the side effects of this medicine is going to kill me. And praise God, the side effects of sin in your life will not only kill you, it'll kill your family. It'll kill the spirit of everybody. You say it'll kill them and they'll be in the grave? Well, maybe, but it's going to kill their spirit. Your side effects of that old sly tongue, my side effects of that old backbiting, that'll kill my spirit. That'll kill the spirit of me trying to talk to somebody. God, would you help me? Help me to be quick to hear and slow to speak. 
Yeah, that's the, that's the side effects, friend, of letting that old jealousy stir in your heart. Let that old malice stir in your heart. The side effects of that is you're going to hinder somebody. My, I had a testimony one time, and I still feel it. If I hinder anybody from getting to heaven, it ain't fair for me to be there. If I hinder anybody, you, you may not believe that in your own heart. But if I hinder anybody from getting to heaven, how do I deserve to be there? I do not deserve. I know I don't deserve it now, but praise God, it's even worse than that. I don't deserve to be in heaven. If I've hindered somebody else from getting there, how many times has my spirit and the side effects of my spirit, my angry spirit, my carnal spirit, how many times has my spirit hurt somebody else and caused them not to come to the house of God? Now, they're going to talk about you no matter what. But how many times have they said, I ain't going down there? I'm not going down there. They talk about me all the time. They have knew me all my life. They know the mistakes I've made and they can't forgive me. I hope we don't do that here. I sure hope we don't do that here. Our arms are open. The same way the Lord's arms is open. We say whosoever will. If I can be saved, surely the goodness and mercy. Everybody else can be saved. Is there a side effect you're dealing with? You know, when I took that medicine, I could tell the side effect was different than what the, the normal sickness was. There may be something going on in your body, your mind. I'm not just talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually tonight. Is there something going on that you're dealing with the side effect of it and, and you can tell the side effects have been pretty bad. The side effects of whatever you're doing, it's hurting you. It's hurting your family. It's hurting your mom and your daddy. Praise God, it's hurting everybody. I want to remind you, the Bible says the wages. The wages of sin. One day there's going to be a payday for that. You say, I'm saved, yeah. But I've got scars in my body to prove. The things that I allowed myself to do, I still carry those scars. I'm, I'm not be thankful for that at all. But there's things I've kept carried in my grave. Young people, listen to me tonight. Please listen to me. Don't allow the devil to pull you away. Don't allow Satan to pull you away from what mom and daddy's taught you. If they taught you the right way, you stay on the path. And praise God, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't try to do it your way. Don't try to do it your way. There's consequences for that. For the children just running around doing whatever. Mom and daddy ain't watching them. There's consequences for that. For the adult that's running around doing whatever. There's consequences for that. The side effects of your sin, friend. It's going to hurt you worse than what you think. It's going to hurt you worse than what you think. Anybody like to come pray tonight? Anybody like to come pray? This altar is open. Do you feel the side effects? Do you feel the side effects? The good news is, <laughs> His grace is sufficient tonight. If you've got side effects in your life from something you did 40 years ago, something you did 20 years ago, God's not just going to leave you there, friend. He's not going to leave you there. He won't leave you comfortless. The Bible said He didn't leave us comfortless, but He sent that comforter. Are you dealing with side effects from something you did? Can I tell you, God can forgive you of that. He's a forgiving God. He's a forgiving Savior. He didn't go to that cross and die for no reason. He went to that cross so that this very night, if you've got side effects lingering in your mind, in your body, He'll save you. He'll forgive you that. He'll forgive you that side effect, friend. I don't want to leave without giving you an opportunity to pray. I know this message wasn't much, but it was for somebody, maybe for me. God wants to touch you tonight, friend. Is there a side effect you're dealing with? Is there something you're dealing with? Do you like God to give you strength? Praise God. Most time when somebody has side effects, the first thing to do is take them off that medicine. They take them off whatever medicine that is first. Let's see if these side effects go away. So if there's something you know what's causing the problem, how about weaning yourself of that thing? How about weaning yourself of being around that person? How about weaning yourself of watching that? Listen to that wrong music. That wrong music will pull you to a devil's hell, friend. I know all about it. I've been there before. Listen to the wrong thing. Listen to the wrong people. Wrong advice. Watching the wrong thing with your eyes. There's side effects to that. You come to church, you won't be able to feel His Spirit like you want to. Praise God. Anybody like to come pray? Father in heaven. We thank you for this opportunity you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the little message, God, that you've given us. 
I hope that I can examine my own life to find, Lord, if there's anything that's hindering me. God, I know there's been many side effects in my life. Self-inflicted, rather. Self-inflicted. Things I've done to myself, God. But you've always been faithful. Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If someone's been found guilty tonight in their own heart, God, I pray you'd give them a space of repentance, space of time that they can repent. I know from time to time, God, we all get pulled into this trap. We all find ourselves in in a place we don't need to be. And God, there may be somebody tonight that found himself bound down. And they, they finally realize that tonight, what all that anguish is in their life, it's a side effect of sin. It's a side effect of something they've allowed themselves to harbor in their heart. Lord, I don't know. I just trust that you'll touch every soul that's here tonight. Give us all strength. God, they know I love them. Lord, they know I love them. And Lord, you love us more. We pray, God, as we leave here tonight, that you'll go home with us. Lord, whatever it is, that side effect is beating us down, killing us. I pray that you'd give us that treatment. God, that you'd give us that treatment to let the swelling go down. Let us be able to breathe again. God, let the swelling in our eyes go down. We'd be able to see. Let the swelling in our throat go down. We'd be able to swallow. Lord God, I pray that you'd touch us. Let our heart rate go back down. Give us strength, Father. We won't cease to praise you. Jesus, precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for standing. Praise God. One of you brothers. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise God. You dear sisters, let's come anoint. Come on, we believe God tonight. Let's anoint our dear sister while the Spirit's still moving. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You dear sister, if you can believe, let's come on up here tonight. Sisters, brothers, this, this is real tonight. We believe God's able to do this. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You dear sisters, come on up here. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Come on. We got plenty of room up here. As long as you can believe, you're more than welcome to be up here tonight. Praise God. He's able to do all things exceedingly abundantly, what we can ask or even think. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All the believers. Praise the Lord. Let's come together. Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, we come here tonight. God, I pray that you touch your dear sister, Father. I know that you're able to touch her, God. I know that you're able to give her strength, Father. Lord, we believe upon you. We've seen uh, just a little bit of what you're able to do, God. And uh, we, Father, we've not seen the end of it. And I know, God, you're able to touch our sister. We thank you for what you've done so far. God, you're not done with her yet. I know that Satan would love to destroy her today. He'd love to take her out right now, God. But in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, you'd be able to touch her. I thank you for allowing her to be here tonight, God. I pray, God, you'd give her strength. I pray, Lord, you'd help her on this journey, God, to strengthen her feet, strengthen her mind, strengthen her legs, God, and everything that's in part of this body that you brought together, Lord. You formed her in her mother's womb, just like you did all of us, God. I pray, Lord, we believe together in one mind and one accord. You said if we come together, Lord, you said if we come together believing, touching this thing and agree, it shall be done. I believe that tonight, God. I refuse not to believe it tonight. I refuse to believe, God, that you're not willing to touch my sister. I refuse to believe it, Father. I'm going to believe there's no unbelief in my heart tonight that you're able to do this tonight, God. I believe this in my heart, and I believe everybody here is the same way. We agree together, Lord, in one name. There's only one name under heaven whereby we must be saved. That same name can heal us tonight. Lord, when they raised the roof up and they dropped a man down, praise God. He said, thy sins be forgiven thee. Praise the Lord. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And anything else was touched his body. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Praise the Lord. God, would you touch this body? I thank you for the witness. God, I thank you for her ministry. How many times it's blessed the whole congregation here. And it's nothing but an attack of the enemy. I know it. I can see it with my own eyes, God. He'd love to attack her and to bring her down. But greater is he that's within her than he that's within the world. We believe that together tonight, Father. Lord, you see the believers that come, those that are still in their seat, they believe just the same God. Everybody here tonight is in agreement that God is able to do this. (laughs) <laughs> by one name in Jesus 
name we do agree. <laughs> Jesus, we believe tonight. Jesus, touch tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch us tonight, Father. Love you, sis. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. My, my, my. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One of you brothers come close out for us tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah.